Hello everyone, we're going to be talking about input. So as a quick recap, we know that if we use the plus sign to add two integers together, we get an int. For example, here we go, num1 num plus num2, those are both integers, total is going to be an integer. So what happens when we want to add, or if we put the plus sign with two strings? So if we use the plus sign between strings, this is called concatenation. Concatenation is sort of a fancy computer term, which is means you're combining two strings together, kind of smooshing them together, and the result is actually a new string. So for example, if we have code equals ITP and num equals 115, so those are both strings. Now in this case, 115 is a string, right? Because we have the quotes, it's a string. So if we say print code plus num, what that does is that's going to give us a string. It's actually going to smush these together. If I then say course equals code plus dash plus num, we also get a string. So as you can see, in these two cases, it's actually combining my first string and my second string. And then in the third case, we're actually combining three strings. So ITP, and then the dash, and then 115. So the plus sign combines or concatenates strings together directly as you have them written. Now, when you concatenate strings, a couple, couple caveats here. You cannot combine a number and a string. Python d does not know what to do with plus and number and string. So when you have two ints, you get an int and a plus. You have two strings together, you get a string. But if you try to combine them, it'll give you an error. So therefore, if you need to concatenate together a string and an int, you have to convert the integer to be a string. Okay? So, really simple way to do that, there's a function called str. And str will take in parentheses basically an integer, a bool, a float, some kind of number, and it'll turn it into a string. So for example, if you say str parentheses 10, it's going to give you quote 10, so that's a string. If you say str true, right, which is capital T, it's going to give you a boolean, but it's going to give you quote the string version of that, okay? And why do we do this? Well, sometimes it's really useful to concatenate something together that's a string with something together that's an int, but that would give us an error, so we just kind of temporarily convert our number or our boolean to be a string. Here a great example. Now I say code equals ITP, num equals 115. So here, this is an integer, right? Because it doesn't have quotes. So if I were to say code plus num without converting it, it'd give me an error. But by saying str in front of it, that does the conversion. No problem, we're able to print out IT 115. Same thing, I can, can concatenate with three strings like this, as long as I again convert it. So the, the rule is, if you're going to use a plus sign, and you're going to have an integer and a string on one of those sides, make sure that you convert your integer to be a string, just using the str function. Shifting gears, we're going to talk a little bit about input specifically now. So when we talk about input, what we're asking is, how do we let the user type something in that we can then store in the program? So the input function lets us do that. Sometimes we also call this a prompt for getting information from the user. So the syntax of the input function, it's similar to print in that you say input parentheses and then some sort of message that the user will see. But the difference is now we get to store whatever the user types in into a variable. So that's the difference. You say variable equals input. So some examples of this are, we could say day equals input, what day is it? And the user is going to see a message, what day is it? Whatever they type in is going to get stored in the day variable. You can also store the prompt or the question in a variable and then say input prompt, that's your variable, store it out that way. So let's look at how this would work as an example. Let's say we type day equals input, what day is it? So when you run this line of code, the program is going to stop. It's going to show you this in the, in the output window. What day is it? Okay. Now, over here, this is our variable. So this is what's in the computer's memory, storing information. So the program is paused, waiting for something to happen. The user then types something in, the program will continue. 
So let's say that they type in Monday. So in green, this is what the user is typing on the keyboard. When they hit enter, Monday is now stored in this variable. So what's happened is that this is a function that returns a value or gives you back a value that you can store in a variable. That variable uh, can get the assigned value the user typed in. We can then use that variable just like we could any other variable. So again, what day is it? It's Monday. So it gets stored in the day variable and then we can quickly print it out with a print statement. Today is that day. So after we use the input command, get something from the user, the variable becomes just like any other variable that we've used before, except now the user was allowed to type this in and make something happen. Now, this is exactly what happens for strings, but let's look at what happens for numbers, because numbers is a little bit different. Okay, so I've got here num1 equals input, num2 equals input, and then I want to add them together. Okay, well we know that two integers together, add with a plus sign, is going to add them. So if the user types in 3 and 3, we would expect that this would give us 6. Right? We, 6 is a reasonable thing to expect. You've stored three, two variables, add them together, but the actual output is 33. But that's not correct. So what's happening here? Well, the input function always returns a string. This is the key thing. No matter what the user has typed in, if they've typed in capital T true, the number 3, uh, the number 4.27, no matter what they type in, the input function is going to return a string. We know that the plus sign between strings concatenates them together. So what do we do? Well, whenever the user has typed in a number and you're expecting a number like an int or a float, we must convert them to be the proper number, to be an int or to be a float not a string. Really simple. We do it like this. We simply use the int or the float function. So if you say int quotation mark 10, which is what the user would type in, it'll just turn that right into a 10 for you. If you say float quotation mark 10.0, it's going to immediately turn that right into the float for you. So now, basically whenever you're asking the user for information, and you have something to type in, all you have to do is put int in front of that input command, just like that. With a little parentheses here at the end, just like so. And if you do that, now num is an integer, and num2 is an integer, and so when you add them together, you get 6, which is exactly what you would expect. So in summary, we just have to be careful about these three particular functions as use them as helper functions. So when we are trying to concatenate a string and an integer with a plus sign, you got to make sure that your integer is converted to be a string so that it can properly concatenate or combine them. And we do that simply with the str function. That'll convert your int to a string. Now, when you're using the input command, and you want your value that the user typed in to be stored as an integer or a float, we use these sort of companion methods, int or float. And when you pass in some sort of string, it'll turn that into be either an integer or to be a float, just as you expect.